Hello everyone! Today I'd like to show you how I made the cylinders for my new solar steam engine. So I first made some uh, rough parts and I all made them out of 6mm standard grade aluminum plate. And these are the hole saw diameters I used. Okay, so now let's make the piston parts out of Teflon. So this is one millimeter Teflon. You can also use thinner Teflon, but I couldn't find that. Only uh, a few tenths of a millimeter, but that's too thin. But if you have uh, like uh, half a millimeter thick, it would be great. Okay, so I have here the cylinder and I filed a nice radius on the inside here so it's not sharp anymore. So if I now have my piston rod, and I put one of these rings over it, one of these Teflon rings, and then again, one of these aluminum rings. And then I screw it all together. So if I now massage it in, like so, and you can see that the Teflon is uh, bending. So if I keep doing this, eventually it will pop in. Now you just turn it around a bit like this, so it really starts bending. You can push it in a bit. Okay, so now this one is ready. You can already see that it can draw a, a vacuum. So we'll take this one off. Okay, so now we have two of them. And put this one backwards, like so. Okay, so now they're back to back. So this one will hold the pressure from this side, and this one will hold the pressure from that side. But now I need to get it in. And of course this one won't get in that easily, so I have to massage it in. Okay, so I now made another ring with a 6mm hole in it and this is going to be the seal for the front. So where the piston is coming out of the cylinder is going to be like this. And of course this side needs to be sealed to minimize the leakage. So I'm going to push this on here. Now turn it around again. Now it's in the right orientation. So if there's now steam on this side, then this seal will close it off. Okay, so now I've countersunk this side and filed it out a bit. So it has more or less the contour of this seal. So this now fits in here perfectly. 
Now it needs to be bolted on here. I'm first going to drill some holes and then I'll be back. Okay, so now all the holes are in, so I can now assemble it. Okay, to seal this side, I'm going to put an O-ring in here, I'm going to fit it in between the gap that's in here. And of course you can buy o-rings in several sizes but my problem was that i couldn't find o-rings just at one supplier so if i wanted to buy o-rings for the three different cylinder sizes i had to buy them at three different suppliers and that would make it uh, quite expensive so instead of that i bought this o-ring cord and i'm going to make them to size and glue them together with super glue So for now, degrease the ends with a bit of acetone or whatever solvent, as long as it doesn't leave a residue. Small amount of super glue. And slowly press them together. Hold them for a minute. So now it's stuck together. Of course you have now a little bit of a seam, but that's never really a problem because it's always just being pushed into the corners. So this will probably work fine. And now it won't fit of course. Okay, I needed to, to make the o-ring a bit smaller because of course it needs to fit nicely in here. So now it does, but it doesn't didn't fit around this part anymore. So. I grinded an angle to it, so now the o-ring will fit into the angle. I need to cut a bit of the outside of the Stefan and mark each part with a little groove so I can uh, screw it all back together in the same orientation because I drilled all these holes by hand just by center punching it. And of course that's never as accurate as when you setting it out on a mill so so there are some small variations in the position so i'll now put it back together and then we'll see if it fits okay so now this o-ring fits on here pretty nice put a bit of o-ring grease on it or whatever grease as long as it's lubricating that makes sure that the o-ring will slide into the corners when there's pressure pushing against them and also you can insert it a little bit easier now snuck in here very nice okay so now I've also made the back end of the cylinder this just swaps right in here and uh, it's more or less the same as the front side only it doesn't have a hole all the way through it so now I need to make the cylinder to the right size because I'm not going to use this whole piece and the stroke of the piston needs to be as long as the diameter of the piston so it's a diameter of 40 millimeters so the stroke also needs to be 40 millimeters this piece of thread here i'm going to remove later so i now need to measure this bit
Okay, so the combined length should be 83 millimeters, but I'm going to make it 85, so I have a little bit more slack. Okay, so let's cut it off. Okay, so that's now cut the length. So this fits in here. This part will fit in here and I've marked these. So the, so the holes here uh, align with each other. So here's a mark and there's a mark. So now I just form four four millimeter rods in here to tighten it all together. And then the cylinder is completely finished. Okay, these uh, rods are now ready. Also draw the holes where the steam will come in and go out. And later I will lock tight these bolts in at the front and the back. So they will be completely airtight or steam or butane or whatever. Uh, and one thing I need to mention is that when I put in this piston, then because the Teflon is very much bent into a certain position, that it's quite stiff and it's quite hard to move the piston inside the cylinder. So what I did is I put the piston inside the cylinder and then heated it all up with a hot air gun to about 100, 120 degrees. And so the Teflon will sort of melt into its new position. And then when it cools off, you can move the piston very easily. But now it's actually leaking a little bit. So what I now need to do is heat it up just a tad with the hot air gun so it will move back a little and then it has the right tension maybe i need to repeat this a couple of times until i have the right amount so that's what i'm going to do now so now i've heated it up just slightly i don't know if you could see it on camera but it immediately opened up a bit. Now it fits much better. So now we'll let it cool off outside the cylinder and then it will seal off fine. Also the reason why I use Teflon for the piston and for the seal here is because this way I hope to avoid internal lubrication of the steam engine and because Teflon is self-lubricating and especially has a very low resistance on aluminum therefore I hope that I don't need any lubrication but we'll see. Okay, so it's now all screwed together and I left these rods a lot longer than they need to be because I'm going to fix the cylinder to the frame of the steam engine with these rods and because I'm not really sure what I'm going to do here, I left them a little bit longer. So later I will cut these to the right length. So let's do a little test. It's not an ideal situation because it will leak here. So I blow some compressed air in it. pretty strong. Okay, now the high pressure cylinder is ready. So I now need to make the intermediate and low pressure cylinder. So I saw someone have a very nice trick for that. So let me see if that will work. Well, it worked pretty nice. Okay, so now these are ready. And the manufacturing process is the same and only the diameters vary. And I don't really use uh, drawings for making all these parts for the steam engine. 
But after I finish the part, then I will make a drawing and post them on uh, Facebook and Instagram. So uh, after a few days or maybe a week after this video is uploaded, you can find a drawing there. Okay, that's it everyone. The next video will be about the valve system. So if you don't want to miss out, then please subscribe, click the notification bell and see you next time.